Hi Leo, welcome to August. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. And I'm getting ready to do your August love tarot skills. And first I want to call in some good energy and create some sacred space around this reading. And hopefully you guys have survived last month's eclipses. <laughs> um, but we have another one coming in your sign <clears throat> on the 11th. And then there's a full moon in Pisces on the 26th. Um, so in, in the meantime, I want to say thank you for liking and subscribing to the channel. And thank you for um, people who have taken time out to leave comments. Thank you for those who have ordered readings. I've enjoyed working with you. Thank you for your support. And I'm always happy to find that um, the readings have helped people. So that's good. Thank you. So let's see what's going on with Leo this month. What does Leo need to know about love and relationships for the month of August? What does Leo need to know about love and relationships for the month of August? What does Leo need to know? May only the highest forces be present to ensure that the truth be told. King of Cups, the Knight of Swords, the Six of Wands, the Devil, the Ace of Cups, the Five of Swords, the Fool, the Empress, the Lovers, and the Four of Pentacles. Okay, so... The King of Cups represents someone who's very sensitive, very intuitive, very has a very calm healing quality. So you might be either you're dealing with someone who could be a water sign, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. Um, you're either dealing with someone like that who maybe it's a confidant someone that you can confide in and talk to and they have a way of helping you through difficulties um, either that or these are qualities that you need to express or that you are expressing um, this is a card of someone who may not always show their feelings but they have deep emotions and they have um, so maybe you need to be like if this is not a person that you're dealing with then it could be that you need to be calmer and kind of go with the flow this August. Don't try to um, force things or don't try to control things. You have the Knight of Swords here. This is a, like a warrior energy, the Knight of Swords. So someone could be like, you might be thinking of making a quick departure. This is someone with like warrior energy that wants to fight. So you're either dealing with someone, like you're trying to be calm, you're trying to keep things calm and keep the peace, and someone may want to antagonize you. Someone's pushing your buttons. Um, and you may feel like, I want to just like, either someone's wanting to leave, or you're, try you're thinking about leaving something that's just not working. Because this is impatient energy. Sometimes the Knight of Swords can represent someone who's a little on the selfish side, um, who only, like, they want to jump into something without thinking. And they're just thinking, I've got to do this. i just got to get out of here. i just got to do this. And they're not really planning ahead too much. They're just reacting instead of planning. So you want to try not to be reactive in the month of August because we have a lot of energy. This Mars energy is not strong right now. It's retrograde, it's squaring Uranus, so we have a lot of repressed anger going on. And this could be, you know, you could be feeling um, frustrated and you want to like lash out. And the cards are saying, you know, it's like things may not be happening fast enough for you. And you may feel like, you know, you're chomping at the bit. You want to just, you want things to happen. 
You want to move. You want to go. You want to do. You want to fight. Um, you want to jump into something. Um, but the energy is more like, don't rush. Calm yourself down. Look into things before you make decisions. This is not really a good time to make major decisions. Like it's more of a time to, a strat to create a strategy and plan than to actually take action um, and to just assess where you are and where you want to go. And then when, you know, to me, September would be better for action. So if you're wanting to launch something, don't rush. Um, even though we're having a new moon in your sign, it's bringing in new energy. Um, but you may not start to see the results of that new energy until everything starts going forward. So don't be impulsive. Don't be reactive in August. That's the message I'm getting. You could also be dealing with someone who is like this Knight of Swords, and that could be an air sign. It could be someone who's like Aries, Gemini, Libra, who is very in, you know hasty in everything they do. They're a little bit insensitive. They don't see how their actions are affecting others. So either it's you behaving like this or it's someone you're dealing with who's behaving like this. So you have to just be careful and start and like actually consider others if that's you. And if not, um, then you're just, to, if you're dealing with someone like this, then you just need to be calm and not let them push your buttons, not let them draw you into a drama. Because this knight always wants to fight. They enjoy that type of thing. They, like that's how it was, it's what makes them feel alive. When they fight with people, they and you know they get those the juices running, you know the blood boiling. <laughs> they they like being in that state of fight or flight. That this is a fight or flight type of card energy. <clears throat> now you have the six of wands here in the past, so you're making progress in some area of your life, like there's career success or in a relationship. You've had some successes in the past. The devil card. This is the recent past, but it's fading. This has to do with obsession, addiction. So you might be like dealing with someone, either you're addicted to the person or you're dealing with someone who has some type of drinking or drug problem, or it could even be something that you're trying to overcome. Like maybe you have this obsession with someone in a relationship. You can't, it might be more of a physical thing, like this strong um, chemistry and it's hard to break away. Like, even if you want to leave the relationship, you keep getting drawn back in because the chemistry is so strong. So it's almost like you're almost possessed by this person. Or you are um, you have this really, like there's an attachment, there's a cord that you have to cut um, if you want to break away. Um, it's, it's almost like beyond your control. But this influence is fading. So I think you're going to get a grip on this. You're going to handle this ish, this situation. You're not going to be imprisoned forever. You know, you know these chains here. You see, I don't know if you can see the card. These two people are chained. It's like they're chained to their passion. Their passion is what's what's bringing them together. But that's all they have. Um, there's not a real like connection in a different you know like a more um, soulmate type connection. It's more of a physical connection. Um, and it's more like an addict. The relationship is more like an addiction. Um, for some of you, it might feel more like an addiction than real love. Like you're confusing lust with love in one, in maybe one relationship. For other people, you might be really struggling to, um, overcome some type of bad habit. You know, either it's drinking, drugs, whatever. You're trying to get a grip on that and it's got a grip on you and you're trying to move away from that. The Ace of Cups is coming up though. And you have the Fool card here. So you really, there might be new love coming in August, especially at this new moon eclipse in Leo. You might have an op you might have an opportunity if you're in a relationship and you're not happy. Um, you might be thinking of forming a new relationship with someone, or sometimes the Ace of Cups <clears throat> can mean um, having a new start in a current relationship where you say, you know, let's just have a new beginning. Let's leave the past, you know, let's oh, like, forget the past, forget the problems we had in the past. Let's start over. Let's try, you know, a new approach to love because that's what the Ace of Cups can be that too. 
and the Five of Swords coming up here. This is a card of feeling victimized. So you might be feeling victimized by this Knight of Swords. And you're thinking, I'm just getting out of here. Like you're just wanting to leave. You're wanting to find something else. Um, the other thing with the Five of Swords, you might be dealing with someone's hostility. So if this King of Cups represents a person that you're dealing with, sometimes the King of Cups, although they're very loving and they're very um, nurturing, you know, the water signs are very compassionate. They're, you know, they're there for you. They take care of you. When they feel rejected, they may get hostile. They may get sarcastic or, you know. So you might be, if you're trying to leave a relationship, you may feel like someone is being hostile with you or you're dealing with someone's hostility. And they're trying to draw you in all kinds of drama and fight with you. And, you know, you just don't want to, you don't want to engage. This is also a card of learning to accept the, like the situation you're in has some limitations. So you might be with a person that you care about, but um, they have some qualities that are difficult to deal with. So you have to take the good with the bad. So you have to ask yourself, you know, I mean, you might be working to change someone. You know, everybody tries to do that. In you know, you can't change people. So this is a card of saying, okay, you either have to love them for who they are and all their flaws, except, you know, the, the broken parts, <laughs> or you have to walk away. If you can't live with the person, because you know, you're not going to change them. Um, so sometimes this card is a card of cutting your losses and moving on. Like when you realize, you know, I, I can't change this person. They are who they are. I love them, but they are who they are and they're not going to change. I have to walk away. So there, some of you might be dealing with that issue, especially with the devil here. So it could be like maybe you're dating someone who has a, 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 a real problem, either a, an addiction problem or some type of obsession. And no matter how much you try to um, work with them and try to explain to them, you know, maybe they're going for counseling even, but it's not helping. It's not working. So now you're just, you have to make a decision. You have the lovers here. Um, do I want to stay with this person or do I want to cut my losses and move on? Do I want to stay in this situation because I can't fix it? I, ha I either have to live with it or I have to leave it, but I can't change it. So you have this fool card coming up. You have the ace of wands and the fool. These are very, this is a strong indication of a new beginning. You have this potential for a new beginning, especially with the eclipse. The eclipse, you know, it brings endings and new beginnings, even though it's a new moon. But sometimes with, when it, because it's an eclipse, someone may be eclipsed from your life or some situation may be eclipsed from your life so that you can have a new beginning. So it's almost like a faded ending that's freeing you so that you can start over and have a better, you know, another a fresh start. Because that's what this fool is. It's a fresh start. And it's in your fear sector, so you might be feeling a little um, afraid of this new beginning. Like, I don't know, I'm in this new environment, I don't know. You know, you're having all these doubts and, and fears are cropping up. Like, if it's a new relationship, you're like, I don't know, is this going to work? I'm feel Like, you know, you're out of your comfort zone with the fool. You're in a whole new environment. But in your environment, you have the empress. So this is a card of home, family, um, creativity. So you have this new beginning to create a home for yourself or to create that loving family if you've always wanted to feel loved and nurtured and surrounded by children or family members. You can have that. Um, it's also a card of, of harvest and abundance. So if you've been working towards something, it's a card of birth. For some of you, you might want to have a child or you might be giving birth to something. And if it's not physical birth, it could be um, you're giving birth to a creative project. Like you're, maybe you're publishing something or you're writing music or you're doing art. Whatever it is, it's your baby. You, you're, you might be starting a business, um, but you're very attached to it. And it's something that you've been, you need to nurture because the Empress is the mother. So it could be a new relationship that has the potential to bring a lot of happiness, but it has to be nurtured. It has to be, you know... You're at the beginning stages. It's just in, an, in its infancy. And it has it needs a lot of attention. It needs nurturing and love so that it can grow into something bigger and better. 
And you also have the lover's card here. This is in your wish fulfillment. So you really want to connect with someone. And you have that potential to connect with someone in August on a really serious level. The lover's is a strong connection. But it's a better connection than the devil. You know, if you notice these two cards, they're both, it's, it's like, it's two people coming together. But in the devil card, they're coming together for the wrong reasons. And they're chained to each other for the wrong reasons. It could be an addiction, like, or, they, or it could be out of necessity, or it could be because of some sexual attraction. But it's not, it's like a surface, it's not real. It's not the right way of people coming together. The lovers, this is, these are two people like, that are soulmates, like they belong together. Like you, your life is incomplete without this person. And that's what you're wanting. You're wanting someone that is more than physical, that's more of a spiritual union. That's someone that you could really say, this is my partner, this is someone who knows me, I know them, and um, I can't imagine living without them. That's the kind of connection you're looking for. And you could have that, but you may have to come to some type of awareness about your current situation where, you know, you have to let go. That's what this whole eclipse cycle is doing. And you, look, you have this four of pentacles as an outcome. This is a card of someone who's holding on to something out of security needs. Like you're holding on because you feel like I need this person for my security. I feel safe with this person. You know, if I didn't have this person, then what I would, you know, then what? But, um, so it might be some kind of financial thing. Like, you can't leave because of financial reasons. You know, maybe you're, the person is paying all the bills or something. And you couldn't make it on your own. So you're stuck in this relationship for other, everything, other things, not love. It's not like two people coming together because they just want to be together. It's more of out of necessity, out of, for survival or for security reasons. But if you could, but at the same time, the, the um, relationship may have some um, some things that are not healthy and can't be fixed. So you're going to have an opportunity for a new type of relationship in August, and you're going to have to make a choice because the lovers is always a choice, and especially in a love reading, it would be a choice between two people. So you might meet someone new. And then you're going to have to decide, do I want to give up what I have, what represents security for me, to pursue this new thing? Um, or for some of you, it might be a temptation, you know, that's interfering in a current relationship. Some, like the devil could also mean temptation, desire. Like there could be someone around you and you're thinking of getting involved in, but you're like, oh, I don't know. Then, so you have choices to make. You have an opportunity for a new beginning that can bring you a, a good connection, a soulmate connection. But it may involve um, cutting your losses and moving on from something that's just not quite, you know, it has some toxic elements to it. It has some things that um, you either have to live with it or leave it. Love it or leave it. <laughs> yeah. And don't, so don't let fear, the, the Four of Pentacles is a card of, you know, people hold on to things out of fear. Maybe you're holding on to money, you know, or it, but it's more than just money. The Four of Pentacles is also being afraid to share your love, holding on to love, not knowing that you have to give to receive. Like, if you want someone to love you, you have to be open and vulnerable. You have to be loving. You know, you can't be like, oh, I'm going to be, I'll be vulnerable when they love me. You know, you have to kind of drop your pride and go out on a limb and say, hey, you know, I really care about it. Like, tell someone how you feel. And the love that you give will come back to you. But if you sit there and you hold yourself close out of fear because you're afraid of getting hurt and you're not giving your love out, maybe you're keeping your feelings in with this King of Cups. You could be, you know, burying your feelings, not expressing them. Um, and that can cause some problems too. So don't be afraid. Don't hold on out of fear. Be with someone for, uh, because of love. Don't stay in a situation if it's not working. If something's not working for you, don't hold on to something that's not right because it's preventing you from finding something that is right. So don't be afraid to let go in August. If you need to let go of something, let it go. Free yourself. That's what these energies are all about. They're about releasing the past, releasing past patterns that don't make sense, releasing whatever has been holding you back, 
Um, Uranus wants to free you so that you can have be more authentic, so that you're not just going through the motions of life, but you're enjoying life and loving life. That's where, that's where you need to be. So let's see what this new moon um, is meaning for you. You've got the new moon in your in your first house with Mercury, so it's a time for you to be to self to, to have a new. Um, it's time for you to speak up with Mercury there. It's time for you to speak up and communicate what you need, what you want, and to sh let your voice be heard. Um, it's a t also a time for a new way of thinking. Mercury re relates to uh, thought, our thought patterns. So, and Leo is about self-expression, honoring your inner child, you know, playing, being more playful, being creative. So if you've been all work and no play, you need to start playing in August. <laughs> um, you need to get involved in something creative, you know, paint, sing, play music, something, write, do some writing. But that's going to feed your soul. Um, you have Jupiter. Now, this Jupiter squaring this new moon. But it's not... Jupiter squares are not, you know, traumatic. Um, the only thing that... Because Jupiter is uh, the luck planet. It doesn't really have any bad aspects. The only thing you have to be aware of with Jupiter is going overboard. Taking on too much. Doing too much. Like promising. Like, like you want to do everything. Okay, I'm going to start this project, that project, this project. And then at some point you realize, oh my God, I've taken on too much or I've spent too much money because Jupiter gives you this feeling of optimism. Um, it's in your fourth house. So you could be moving into a home. Uh, if you're moving in August, you're, it's a good time to look for a house. Just don't sign the contract till September, till Mercury goes direct. But you could find some, a house that has a lot more room and is um, brighter and more expansive, you know, you can find your, your dream home when Jupiter goes through the fourth house. So if you are moving into a new location, um, it's going to be a much bigger place than where you've lived before. Neptune, Jupiter is trining Neptune, and that's in your eighth house. So there could be some kind of... Um, or, well, the eighth house is the house of intimacy. It's also the house of other people's money. With Neptune there, you have to be careful that you're getting the truth, you know, there could be deception or illusion around money or inheritance or taxes. So you might have some issues with that. On the positive side, Neptune can bring a soul union, you know, a spiritual union with someone that, you know, lead, that ha allows you to be, uh, like that has greater intimacy. Instead of just being a superficial relationship, it could have something that has greater intimacy. Pluto's in your sixth house. It's been in your sixth house. So um, you need to take care of your health more. You need to stop sacrificing yourself for others. True Pluto is transforming your your um, your work environment and also um, your health. The way you take your know, diet, exercise. You might be thinking of you know going on a new health kick and changing the way you eat or the way you live. You know where it's going to be more beneficial. You have to start loving yourself. Um, especially with Neptune in the 8th, if you have any kind of physical problems, it, it, it may be hard to um, diagnose with Neptune because there's, it always brings confusion. Um, but in any case, this new beginning is very important for you because it's in your sign. So if you want to really put yourself out there and don't be afraid to be, you know, speak up and express yourself, and get those buried emotions out. That's what you need to do. You need to get out, release those emotions that have been, you know, stuffed in for so long. And maybe that will help. Like the, it's like the devil is kind of like a possession. Like if you, if you have anger and you're not releasing your anger in a healthy way, or you're just making it, um, stuffing it down, you know, and not expressing your feelings, it almost, it becomes like a possession. It possesses you. So you want to release that, that, and it starts to control you. But when you bring it up to the surface and you, you know, you're aware of it, and then you can release it in a healthy way, then you are freed. You're not carrying that burden. You're not carrying that anger or that resentment. So you have to release that too. Um, if you have to forgive someone, forgive, forgiveness is important. Um, 
Now, at the full moon, we have the full moon in Pisces, August 26th. That's falling in your eighth house, and it's affecting your second house. So if you've been working on your self-esteem and working on your... Um, you might be changing... The, like it, it kind of brings things to the surface. Like, what do I really value? Am I getting paid what I'm worth? Are the people around me valuing me? You know, do I feel valued by the people I work with? Or do I feel valued by the people who love me, who claim to love me? Um, can I be supported by the people who love me? You know, it's because the eighth house is other people's resources. So you might be concerned with money in August, you know, with um, survival. Because the second and the eighth house, it's about survival. And it's about, you know, what makes me feel secure? Is there a relationship? Is it money in the bank? Is it a home, a house over my head? Um, those are the issues you're going to be dealing with at the full moon. So if you're trying to get yourself into a more secure position, things may come to culmination by the end of the month. And then you have Saturn in the sixth house, and Uranus is going through your tenth house. So you're really thinking about your life direction. You might be even changing careers suddenly. You might decide, you know what, what I'm doing is just not working. I want to be free. Um, so you might quit a job and get into a whole new career path. Because Uranus, with Uranus, you never know what's going to happen. Uranus is unpredictable. And with Uranus in your 10th house, you're going to feel like, I want to be free of something. I don't want to be... So if you're in this corporate job, or you're in a relationship that's very restrictive, that you don't, where you don't have freedom, Uranus is going to make you want freedom. You need to be free. You can't do the desk job anymore. You want to do like something where you're outside, um, something that's more mobile, something that gives you more freedom, maybe a better, a freer schedule, a flex schedule or something. Um, Venus is going through the third house. And Venus is um, it's squaring Pluto during this full moon. But there's also a grand Earth trine. So when Venus squares Pluto, there could be some power struggles with love. Venus, or maybe actually because Venus is in your third house, you might be having some arguments with neighbors um, or relatives or brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles. There's some type of power struggle going on um, where you feel like you're being manipulated or someone's trying to bully you into a certain thing, certain behavior. Um, Saturn in your sixth house, you really have to get serious about your health. If you have any kind of health issues, you have to be more disciplined. So you have to eat healthy and exercise. The other thing that Saturn could do, it could make you feel like a workaholic, like you're you're being like you're like a slave. You're just working and working and working. So don't overdo it because you don't want to affect your health with work. But with this grand trine, the sun in your second house. Saturn in your 6th house, Uranus in your 10th house, you could be changing jobs where you're bringing in, like unexpectedly, some opportunity may come up that gives you more security, that brings you more freedom, that frees you from your current limiting situation and brings you, you know, recognition. It may be a lot of work, but you may... I don't know, there might be a sudden opportunity that comes up because Uranus involved, you never know what's going to happen. And the new moon, it's a new beginning. So there's the energy of the new and there's energy of freedom at this time. And I'm seeing that. I'm seeing you maybe possibly making a quick departure from a situation that hasn't been working for a long time and taking that risk um, to get more security To because I think you really need financial security right now. Money's an issue. So you might decide to go into a new, some you know, have a new beginning, either in a relationship or even at the, in a job situation, that's bringing you more money, that's bringing you more freedom, that's bringing you more um, um, security, and also where you're doing something that you love. You're doing something creative. You're giving birth to something new, and you're enjoying the work. You don't feel like you know Cinderella slaving away. <laughs> you're going to feel like, you know, the queen um, making grand entrance. So this is my my reading for August. I hope this reading has been a help to you, Leo. Um, I think you have some good things coming up. So don't be afraid of change. Don't be afraid to let go of what's not lo no longer working. And don't be afraid to embrace the new. 
and let your guard down and let people know how you feel. You know, speak your, your from the heart in August and you can have a new beginning either in a current relationship or 